MHRC, Minority Health Research Center, and they're part of, they're part of a much larger ministry like place. Hello. 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 Yeah, we're still getting your echo. Okay, I'm just going to mute ourselves. Okay. We'll start soon. We'll start Thank you. Soon. Let's start my home with the folks. <laughs> <laughs> How is everybody? By this time next week, maybe we'll know what's going to happen with the president. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just glad it's going to be over. I hope. Uh -huh. I hope. <laughs> maybe not. I'm it's funny how we do make such a big deal about the president, yet constitutionally, originally, it was supposed to not be that major. Thing. And, and, and truly, how much power does that person have? So. Well, increasingly over the years. Uh, but, unfortunately, yeah. we're not a backwater nation, and we still kind of have some checks and balances. So, uh, <laughs> if there's not I mean, nobody can executively order themselves to I don't know, someone could try. <laughs> I, I've heard all this conspiracy theories about Obama declaring martial law and oh, I know, all that, that, that stuff. And crazy. I don't think any generals are ready to stage a coup either, which you would kind of need the military for. Too much. Too much. So either my taxes are going to go up in four years or now, or or not. People are going to say this, you know, it's... Yeah. 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 Was the information about the lab management plans, was that helpful for people? Okay. Yeah. schematic that said one of the rooms is tissue culture. Can I change that to something? Change it however you like. It's just to kind of give you a framework. Did you get into like square footage and indirect costs that first week or yeah? Um, I'm sorry. Oh, the budget one. Yeah. Yes. I thought you usually get charged by the square footage. You do get charged by the square footage. Okay. Um, do you have those slides? I can forward them. Um, I think you did give it to me. I think yeah. it should be in there so you can look through there. And and two also, you know, download that HHMI tax. It is incredibly helpful. The H what? HHMI oh, tax? Yes, yes. 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 So what about like if you're in a shared space? Maybe it's that there's going to be a formula that your division okay. uses okay. usually. Um, yeah, I don't know how that would calculate out, but yeah, more and more places are going to do that. So I guess that probably defrays costs across the board, and probably people are charged a flat. Kind of I don't know. I would check with your app. Yeah. Um, anybody planning on presenting a lab management plan? Just kind of putting that nudge <laughs> gentle. Okay, I missed last week. So was this an assignment that you wanted to? No, yeah, this is something we talked about at the very start um, okay. of, of the course. That this is for you. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we always have a time where people can present lab management plan. They got to use it. Um, to put together a budget, a plan of whom to hire, just to, and they send some okay. basic instructions yeah. to, to reinforce. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to put that all together, just present to get feedback from others, you can. Oh, I'll do that. Right. Right. You can just bring it. <laughs> this is for next week. This is for the last one. Last I think we're getting, we're getting on. So we've just been talking about the lab management information or plans. Um, you don't have to, but if you would like that gymna mental gymnastics to put together a lab management plan, including a, a description of certainly what you would be studying and how that informs your budget, what your budget would be. Um, give yourself as much money as you like, why not, and space. How you would organize that space, uh, who you'd hire, when. Uh, just just as kind of logistics as we have talked about. Come on in.
I'm gonna get rocking and rolling. So in true heretical fashion, I changed up the last couple of classes. Always. And I thought we'd focus more so today on mentoring. Being a mentor and being, men being a mentee. As you will find that you wear both hats almost interchangeably as a new faculty member. And how you can best organize your thoughts around that. And we'll finish out with a case study activity too. So next week I uh, will we'll loop in together conflict collaborations and conflict. And again, it'll be appropriate after the election. Hopefully there won't be any conflict. <laughs> any questions? To start off, okay, gonna wake up. So who are what's a mentor? Who's a mentor? Well, what is a mentor? Give guidance to someone else. Okay. Presumably somebody who's had um, a bit more experience and more um, and can give direction to somebody. Right. right. Again, guidance, experience. A trainer. I'm sorry? A trainer. A trainer. Okay. Could be. Say again. Could be. Critique. Yes. In a nice, constructive way. So, right, an educator, experience, who assumes the role of an advisor, a guide. So, who's the mentee? The person being guided. The person being guided. Think of, think of uh, different status. Hey, so, it's kind of everybody. Grad students, professional students, um, you all, postdocs, residents, other faculty, everybody, staff. Um, there's always a mentor mentee relationship in there somewhere. Either intentional, formal, uh, or maybe informal or kind of accidental. As a role model you may look up to from afar. So I kind of want to go through a uh, five-phase mentoring plan. I can take you around this circle. Um, we talked somewhat already about the purpose, right, as, as a guide. Someone who's not going to do something for you, but help you find your way so you can be independent. That's why I like this, this corny picture of someone kind of going up the steps uh, on their own, ultimately, to, um, to success. But is it the same as coaching, or is it different? Mm. Okay, I don't think so. How is it different? Like a coach will very much direct you in what specifically to do, whereas a mentor is more going to advise you and ultimately you make the decision. I think that's pretty well put. Is there any overlap? Are there some things that are the same? How so? I think that um, you know, the mentor might have an overlap where they might suggest what they think is the right way to coach you in that way and give you reasons why it's not an essence that's coaching. But ultimately, I think yeah, yeah, the mentee would have Yeah, I, I think they're, they're same and different. There's overlap. Um, certainly, the mentoring is more individual and strategic. So, Hopefully you get to select your own mentor as a grad student and so on and so on. So that too would be very individual, but strategic in the area that, that you want to pursue. Um, the mentor is more like a helicopter, really. Not, you know, kind of boots on the ground taking you by the hand. But maybe someone in the flight tower, you know, not by helicopter. From afar, guiding you sometimes. Venti chooses confidential certainly affirming. Whereas a coach is more team-based. You may not get to select on to play sports, but you didn't always you didn't get to select your coach. You play basketball, you got the basketball coach. Um, very focused on skills, hands-on, much more direct, as you were alluding to. Um, but definitely, you know, they can both be cheerleaders and affirming and, and challenging. <laughs> So finding a mentee, you're going to be stepping into that mentor role. Um, what do you look for a mentee? What, what good qualities would you look for? Responsible. Sorry? Responsible. Responsible. Willingness to learn. Willingness to learn. Key. Motivated. Motivated. 
communicate. Communicative. We'll talk about how it all comes down to communication. How about curious? Yeah. Passionate, questioning, professional. So definitely to, to look for these qualities. Um, but then when you think about what you're going to need, or maybe sometimes your mentee will need a team. How many of you have a, a mentoring team as a post -op? We have something similar as a grad student, right? Your, your dissertation team. So, and, I, and I'll send that to you. So, but definitely to find someone who's passionate and curious uh, and help them to build a team that is going to take you both where you need to be in terms of that, that exchange. Mentor wears the many hats. Like what? Teacher? Teacher. Um, leader? Leader. Manager, maybe that coach. So all of these, cheerleader, role model, lifestyle, coach, that kind of thing. Um, and you have to toggle back and forth, right? How many are mentoring maybe a, a graduate student in a lab? What's been the biggest challenge in doing that? Not so much anymore, but at first, <laughs> not getting very frustrated when you see them kind of stumble. Patience. So they okay. So so they stumble. So you're frustrated, or they're frustrated. I think sometimes both. Of us. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you how do you help them through that? Um, it's, it's just being supportive. You know, it's you know, I mean, how many things did I have to learn by screwing them up the first time? So, kind of having that kind of patience, and, patience, right? Um, How about others? Like different work styles or different communication styles. Wow, that's huge. What what's what happened? Um, I think when you with communication styles, for example, if you um, as a mentor, a little bit more assertive, mm -hmm. I think sometimes you project that on other people, like maybe expecting it or like hoping that that's a style. So um, if the mentee is struggling and they have more of a like, passive or just submissive way of communicating, you may not know and then projects might not move along like you expected or, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I think it depends on the personality, mm -hmm. but if you, some mentors take that a little bit more personally and think that Maybe it's something that they did to contribute to that type of pattern or dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I think I think you don't get to like a mentor position without having like a specific way of working and kind of a neurotic way of working. <laughs> and, um, have, does it, if, if everybody doesn't have that, um, I don't know. Sometimes you wonder about time management and stuff like that. So just. I don't know. Sure, it's a relationship that it, you know it, it is mm -hmm. perfect. And for me, we'll, we'll talk a bit time about time, kind of that true philosophy. But I try to balance kind of the formality of you know here's what you need to do, have to get to this place, what have you, um, with an interpersonal kind of relationship. People are human. Life happens. You know, people get sick or have other challenges that they have to deal with. And, um, but always in the context of the individual. You know, what motivates one person is not going to motivate, or, or in the same way, uh, another. So to try and keep that balance, but again, in the context of individuality, it's kind of deep for a Wednesday afternoon meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so responsibilities. Discuss expectations and share skills. And this is where that individual development plan comes in. Yes. Hopefully that will be a tool that would start the conversation about expectations. Certainly career objectives to promote ethical, professional behavior as being you know, a role model. All of these, you know, you, you know, these collaborative atmosphere, um, 
service, again, an outstanding role. But on the other side of the coin, there are responsibilities for the mentee as well. And, and hopefully you, you express this too as, as a postdoc. To discuss expectations. Sometimes that's not that easy, right, with a mentor, especially if they're differing expectations. Uh, and again, all, all very much the same, career objective and, and so forth. So what are some examples of good mentor-mentee relationships? Oh, maybe some of that you've had. Each person is willing to learn from the other. Mutual respect. For right, like a, a free flow back and forth is, yeah. is definitely the most productive. Mutual respect, I think she said, is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And trust. Yeah, absolutely. We've got yeah. that foundation. Yeah. Um, just presence. You know, sometimes people aren't available as much. Or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's harder too, right, for, for mentors maybe who are traveling a good bit. Um, and you know, large labs, and so some senior postdoc that's mentoring perhaps the others. That's, that's a challenge of being present. So I'm dating myself here. But yeah, these are kind of classic examples of, of, of this, the wide stage and so forth. But certainly I think we've had bad examples too. One of my PhD comics. I've decided I'm no longer interested in your research project. Unfortunately, you jumped in at the tail end of the academic and funding interest of the topic. So however much it bores me, I will continue to pretend that I'm interested until you graduate. Continue. It's the least I can do. Right. So I'll, I'll share a personal. So I did, um, either my postdoc at Hopkins, I think I've shared before. And maybe I've told this story, so stop me. But the, my first mentor um, was pretty green, new assistant, right out of the box, really. Um, but, you know, a lot of energy, great ideas, cool atmosphere. I thought, oh, this is it. Um, started working. Within a few months, it became crystal clear that he, he was definitely just zoned in, writing grants all the time. He evaporated and wasn't even responsive to knocks on the door for me. Um, and I can't mentor myself here, in, and I had switched topics and just learning something brand new, uh, which I wanted to dive into. So I turned to a more senior faculty member of the division and said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling with this person. And he and I put together a plan of the, a way to approach this, this mentor and ways perhaps that we could resolve our issues. And so I did that and um, finally was able to get through the door and meet with him. Um, and, and he said, you know, I just, I'm so locked up and writing grants, I don't really have time to mentor right now. So thankfully he knew that and shepherded me to this more faculty, more senior faculty than I had spoken to him. So what turned, you know, what went from really rotten turned out to be good because I landed in the place where I needed to be. Um, but just as a cautionary tale for, for new faculty, um, you're not going to have time to hire that postdoc. We talked a lot about that who to hire and when. Um, just, just a couple of questions. So we talked about the individual development plan. And we're moving along on this web now. And again, to promote communication about all of these things that we've listed. Importantly for those graduate students, time to graduation is key. So, but use this as, um, you know, how is the mentee doing? How is the mentee learning? Um, meeting those milestones. And not to be afraid to go back and forth between these two phases. What's not working? Go back and retool the plan. Uh, develop plans not to be written and put in a box. Uh, it's, you know, a boring living document, but uh, it, it's there to, to guide you both. And certainly to completion. Everybody wants to complete and how that's, uh, just a great, um, certainly, time, as you know. Um, but then mentors are mentors forever. Uh, called upon to write letters and references following, or maybe even help network to find a postdoc in the student's case. Um, I still connect and talk with a lot of my, my mentees still. I met with one who was on campus giving a talk. 
She's on faculty at Duke now. We sat and caught up for an hour and a half. And, you know, those are those are jobs that you're you'll be a mentor forever. Which is and certainly, you know, this I mean it's it's productive experience for both, working toward um, sort of funding, you know, um, productivity, always helpful for tenure and promotion to show that you can teach and mentor and certainly get them through the process. So then, developing a mentor philosophy. What are those guiding or core principles that are important to you? To be, to find a mentor, to be a mentor, or other. what's your mentoring style? Yeah. Some of you are mentoring already. Graduate students or more junior postdocs. Yeah. I think a balance is important. So if you're talking, for example, between formal and informal, mm -hmm. you have obviously have to be very formal at times and maybe tough love. But also informality is good to keep interpersonal right. relationship and communication open. Absolutely. Balance. So have you heard of the say it in six approach? Have you heard of this? So yeah. So, say in six or, or six word memoirs is something that's, that's coming into vogue. It's been around for a long time. It's thought to, to have started with Ernest Hemingway, who wrote, For sale, baby shoes never worn. What do you take from that? It's a story, right? And it was his way to actually to summarize an article if you want to bet, so the story goes. But it's it's definitely a way to capture a vision, or in this case, a mentoring philosophy. I think you know where I'm going. Um, and I bet you know about it and you don't even know. Knowledge that will change your world. Sound familiar? <laughs> the UAD logo. <laughs> Go figure. All right, so the next few minutes. Six, say in six, say your mentoring philosophy in six words, and then we'll share. And Hudson Alpha, if you want to do this too and then send yours by chat, that way we can hear yours as well, or see yours as well too.
couple more minutes. Anybody want to share? How about anybody at Hudson Alpha? Do you have a, a say it in six for mentoring? I can go. It's not like groundbreaking or anything. <laughs> Let's hear it. Um, lead by example, allow for failure. That's awesome. Who else? Yeah. Our team skills help develop on time. Nice. These are great. Um, balanced leadership that guides learning. That's wonderful. Yeah. I uh, too. It's my way or the highway. <laughs> <laughs> or answer me this without Googling it. Ooh, I like that. Who else? And yeah, I put be a guide, not a micromanager, because I personally don't like to be. Oh, a very good. Yeah. Very awesome. Who else? Okay, uh, continuous improvement with curiosity and passion. Oh, that's great. You guys are awesome. These are super. Cool. How about you, Hudson Alpha? Any, do you want to share? Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Oops, there we go. Okay. Those are great. So elements. Certainly we talk, we're going to talk about communication, but all of these certainly are elements that are needed for success of a successful mentor-mentee relationship. Many tools for communicating. Be calm. That's probably the utmost. Um, certainly to always show respect, um, to be fair, think creatively. I'll just highlight those that I kind of, that stand out out to me. Um, being calm, here's an example. I had this awesome grad student who was not married at the time and he must have had a great date because he decided to treat his mice. Usually we, treat, we would treat them six at a time, but he had about 30 mice to treat. So it would have taken him a good bit of the day. He decided to do them all at once. Well, they all died. So I get this frantic call on a Sunday afternoon. He says, I just, I just killed all the mice. I'm so sorry. I like, it's okay. We'll figure it out. You know, what was going on? He's like, I had a date. I'm like, so Monday, <laughs> we had a very, you know, thorough discussion about my work. But that's just, you know. And he ended up finishing very well. So. Again, there are many, many tools to, to communicate. Think, thinking creatively helps too. But what are some obstacles to communicate? What's a speed bump to communicate? Sometimes just cultural differences. Not yeah. just like mm -hmm. geographical, cultural kind of differences, but um, you know, certain institutions have cultures. Um, you know, UAB is very cooperative and collaborative and that's one of the things I love about it. But I've worked with people who are from other institutions who are not as sure. open and sure. communicative all the time. Mm -hmm. So and right, I mean just part of that culture, whether however they're maybe competitive within labs yeah. or, or division. Yeah, I think uh, when someone on either end doesn't have an open mind, one of my um, dissertation mentors, she just, like her thing is she just snaps judgment to whatever and like the reaction's not always appropriate and like that. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Yeah. Misalignment of expectations. Yeah, very much. Yep. Because then how do you, how do you 
reach that divide, right? So, absolutely, unwillingness to communicate sometimes. My way or the highway? No, no, no but I'm using, but, 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 but sometimes that's the models, right? I mean, I'm sure we've, we've seen them. Um, and so that, that kind of breeds a, a lack of confidence, perhaps, and trust. Uh, well, at least not going to listen to me anyway. Feeling vulnerable, certainly career goals, you know, is a topic that we wrestle with a lot here in helping people to navigate those conversations, especially when maybe there's an expectation that a, a trainee or a mentee is going to pursue a particular path, um, when in fact the mentee does not, wants to go a different way. That, that can definitely be an obstacle. Cultural differences in terms of hierarchy or, or questioning authority, um, that sometimes engage. So just a, a little bit more on this, just to establish a culture of respect. Um, you know, I, at one time I had a um, lab manager who, very strong faith, and, and started putting uh, Bible verses uh, all around the lab. And, and I well respected you know, her faith, and that she was very deeply committed. But we had uh, a spectrum of people working in the lab at the time. And so that, that was a, a crucial conversation to gently say, you know, I'm, I love that you're so committed, but let's keep it toward, toward your depths. And, and, and she, she was receptive to that. But to make other people feel welcome as, as well, to, to respect that. Certainly to be familiar with the institution's policy on, on conduct, certainly code of conduct, and to be aware of family responsibilities. Perhaps, you know, someone is, is wrestling with child care and needs to run out the door or needs to realign their expectations for, for working uh, hours and so forth, to be aware and sensitive to them. So defining expectations all around, and, and again, you're familiar with the individual development plan, be they the specifics on the career goals or project details, you know, what are the milestones, be very crystal clear as to how you define success for your mentee. Um, what presentations, publications are anticipated? Um, do they have to have a poster, to, to present a poster in order to go to a meeting? Those types of certainly details. And again, importantly, a timeline, whether it's to finish graduation or to finish postdoc training, and what that next step and how that networking will help the mentee go to the, the next position, if you will. And importantly, for the lab structure, Who's going to do the chores? Who's going to do the ordering um, to have that, again, those expectations out on the table? We used to have a list of chores. You know, who's cleaning the incubator this week? Uh, so that everybody's on the same page. Okay. So no, no, no hurt feelings. Again, using that IDP to chart progress and evaluate success uh, to go back and, and re-talk all of that. That IDP is needed to keep it up to date with regard to expectations and goals. So these are some, some challenges to progress. Structural, professional, and personal. What would be a professional challenge that could throw off success or work productively? Taking classes. <laughs> Perhaps classes that are needed aren't being offered, right, for some reason. This would be your mentee's challenges? Yes, uh -oh. yes, okay. challenges okay. To, to success, right, okay. to their progress, right. Time management? Time management, uh, that could be a personal kind of thing. What if, what if you as a mentor is going to change institutions? Um, yeah. Or perhaps a um, for structural, uh, perhaps the flow centimeter is down, and or or you know the seahorse facility is closed, and you need that, or indeed those types of things that could make things go sideways. Yeah. Uh, back to the professional. Uh, have you, are there still ongoing conflicts between? Themes and departments 
In med school? In GBS? Yes. Yes. That's a long history. So GBS was born back in what, 2009, I guess, 8, 9? Uh, I, I think, yeah, 2009. Yeah, we, we had the option yes. to either go in the team or straight, straight. Right, so prior to that, it was all departmental. Well, departmental, but within other theater programs. So there was IBS, the Integrated Biomedical Sciences, and CMV, Cellular so Molecular Biology. And those two kind of came together and the themes were born. Um, ironically, maybe not so much, a lot of those themes have kind of revolved back to the departments in some ways. Um, territory, so forth. So is there friction? There are at times. No, you know, yeah, because I remember because mm -hmm. yeah. I was farming pops and mm -hmm. it was like double jeopardy of, you know, you have to do this or you have to do this. Right. But you can't, you know, you're yeah. taking too many classes and you're not supposed to take that class. And yeah, I mean, that, some of that has been uh, ironed out, if you will. Um, it's, it's a lot of the tuition flow that's kind of in, in, in conflict now. But I think from a student's perspective, it is better or uh, more clear with regard to expectations of a particular theme, those requirements toward graduation. Yeah, and also, yeah I just run over a lot of faculty expectations. That were, yeah, that, that was a tough time. Students, students were in the middle of a tug of war. Yeah, they were. And, uh, and I think that has improved. Yeah, and like especially with newer faculty, they're, you know, it's like they've forgot they were in grad school, so you're not supposed to take class. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then changing um, interests, if you will, or changing departments, or back then the huge yeah. programs was difficult to do, but that, that's been great. Switching between things, switching between mm -hmm. from a department to right, all this right. <laughs> right. And, and you know, the leadership in place now, I think, for, for GBS is, is much more understanding of that and able to, to join. So we've talked about mentoring or taking on a student or postdoc and mentoring. But I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about you now as the mentee, new faculty member, you being the mentee. So this is a model and we have a development plan from your mentoring development plan um, that, was, that we kind of, um, we, some colleagues of mine, CCTS, kind of drafted from this model. But this is a, a model that was published a few years ago, well, last year, um, out of the University of Utah. And it's a formal two-year program um, to mentor new faculty, specifically clinical faculty, but it's easily adapted for basic science. So it really revolves around putting together a mentoring team for you as a new faculty member. So we'll talk about each one of these. Um, and importantly, the sub part would be the IDP. So, so part of the team would be a senior and an expert mentor. So these can be the same person or different. So the senior mentor would be that person who kind of flies at the 30,000 foot level, kind of the, you know, the wise person, uh, the wise mentor, who can help with strategic career planning, perhaps helping to navigate institutional policies, um, that person who can really provide a bird's eye critique, if you will, of where you're at with regard to tenure and promotion, and really helps if this person is outside of your department to be objective um, and, and to give you that more clear perspective, if you will. Now, this person, as I say, can also be the expert mentor, which is that person who well understands that the project that you're doing or the area that you're studying, um, the grant funding mechanisms in this particular area, certainly identifying collaborators either within the institution or, or perhaps outside, again, in that area. So there may be overlap between the senior and the expert, certainly mentor, um, but to view them, at, at least their roles, if not the same person, uh, a little differently. Well, little boots on the ground in terms of the expert versus the bird's eye view. That makes sense? Whereas the peer and staff are uh, more your, um, would be your direct uh, immediate peers or colleagues, there's so much value in terms of peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. You're going through something at the same time 
or perhaps that colleague who, if you're just starting as an assistant professor, it's that person now getting ready for the tenure packet. Like, like you heard um, a couple weeks ago, they're, they're pretty new and they're looking toward you know, um, colleagues that are maybe a few years older than they are, how they've navigated the system and where they're at putting their packet together. But there's a lot of benefit you know, of complaining together, going to Lucy's and have coffee, and just sharing, or you know, trying to figure out how best to motivate a mentee, for example, um, in, that, in that way. But the staff person, is, as we've talked about before, make this person your best friend. As a new faculty member, he or she is going to well understand you know, the grant policies, the fiscal policies, uh, who you can buy from, uh, or who's a, a good vendor, if you will, uh, like Fisher, for example, um, or maybe how to connect with that core facility that you don't know who runs. Um, they're the, the people, or maybe that lab manager would also be in this, in this position. They're the ones who can really help you with the day-to-day, -day, getting things done on a very granular level. So you think that about putting together all of this team, we have the expert and the senior and the peer and the staff, but you've got to be reflective too. And so that's what this IDP that you have in front of you would help. To think about what your goals are um, as, as a faculty member, where you're at. So to just take a second then and look at the IDP, to think for a few minutes about what your immediate mentoring needs are. Well, that's right now. Okay, who would like to share just some needs that you see for yourself right now? I, I, so like, what do I need as a mentor, from a mentor? Right. right. Um, so I'm putting together my F32 for December, so I yeah. kind of like how I craft that differently than my F31, like mm -hmm. what's you know. mm -hmm. okay, Yeah, that, that's great. Right. I mean, that's an immediate need. <laughs> yeah. One of mine is um, identifying collaborators. And it's interesting because, you know, if you're here, you may be a long time, you know a lot of people. And I think you're, a lot of people are willing to collaborate. But understanding who is going to be an effective collaborator um, and worth the time. This is a lot of time to perform. Yep. And so that would be one. Yeah, well, we'll definitely dive into collaboration next week. Yep. Yeah. Also, how to navigate my mentor. Like, how do you mean? <laughs> um, you know, he's he's established and he's cool with what he's doing, and so um, you know, he just kind of does things his own way. You've got it, like how to untangle what's just his. He's tired of the political departmental stuff that's real and like what's real, you know, what's his, like, I'm done dealing with this, or what's, like, actual problems for people to actually avoid. Yeah, so, so I'm hoping that, yeah, again, that as, um, as postdocs, you have a mentoring team around you that can help with yeah. these. Who else would like to share? 
their needs. For me, kind of somebody to help me prepare for the next step. So mm -hmm. starting to identify, you know, potential faculty positions and putting together application materials and, you know, helping me figure out how to best sell myself or present my work so that, you know, like, I know my PI thinks I'm awesome, but, like, I don't know if that's going to come across to somebody else, you know, to some other institution where they don't know So do you have a well. team that you can... I do. Oh, good. Yeah. So. So I think um, like developing a strategy for like, how to publish versus use that same data for current applications mm -hmm. and there's got to be a balance because we're um, early trying to, you know, I don't have an access of data to go vote, to, mm -hmm. to go to like what's the best strategy. How do you frame it to, yeah. to sell it in the brand time. versus? Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm very relate to that. It's a huge question, like how big of a, how big of a question to ask for a, a grant. Um, you know, what are you capable of? What's in your budget? And how much should you spend on that? Well, it's going to be viewed as too ambitious, right? Versus not. And then that's integrating your experience level mm -hmm. and your publication record. So that's all difficult to figure out. So, you know, in, in addition to the mentoring teams that you build around you, whether it's a postdoc or new faculty member, also look to the resources that we have here. You know, we're in CCTS, and they have these drop-in clinics, but when you saw the, the handout on the table, uh, there are a number of resources, uh, grant writing clubs, um, I'm seeing popping up in different departments and divisions. Um, our department, CDIV, now has one that meets, I think it's once a month. Um, so definitely, if, if you don't see one, start one, and you'd be amazed. I'm sure people will come. Um, just to make sure you... Sure, there was a comment. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was a comment. No, oh, thank you. A little, uh... Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I say it in six. Awesome. Objective perspective on current skills progress. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Let's see if we can get to this one. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So to um, kind of pu pull this all together, I thought we would do a case study. This is a type of ethics case study, but I thought it works well for uh, the class too. So I'm hoping you have that. Yeah, I'm hoping you have some. There's another, right? There should be. And I'm still on to the conference. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me trade with you. Okay, thanks. Okay, Hudson Alpha, I believe you have this handout as well. If not, let me know and I'll send it to you real quick. Um, but for this handout, as I say, it's a case study. So, um, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. How many of you all form into about what? Three groups, three or four groups, and work through this case study together, and then we'll chew on the questions all at once. Let's see, flip around, turn your chairs, and come together. And we'll take we'll take a good I don't know ten minutes or so to read through, and then we'll we'll look at the questions together. As I said, I don't know. This one's
Second Treaty crew discusses the team the questions, and as the team picked just one answer for each question. <laughs> Yeah. That's why I bring that up. 
I mean, I feel like I kind of wonder about the questions that I'm just like, I'll say email and do the hour. What do we have our one on one meetings and bringing up those? Oh, yeah, I got this. So, I like, was saying, Jason timelines. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, I did like a weekly kind of like, okay, this is the week I'm going to be at the conference. This week I'm going to be out of town or at the union. I have this deadline. You know, kind of okay. Sometimes. Sometimes they are. Not uh, not uh, like I'm sure A or B is his name. Yeah. I like B. It's a lot of writing. I like A or B. 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 You didn't make yeah, that yeah, yeah, that I'm going to be on the right now and say that. I'm going to be on the right now and say that. I'm going to be on the right now and say that. I'm going to be on the right now and say that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, which means should be their name. And then it was Joseph, what they say? Okay, it was going to be their name. And so, yeah, it's like, we don't know these times. Well, this could be a full list. We don't know how to do it. Yeah, that's what you had a conversation with. We don't know how to do it. Yeah, and they were like, no, no, I would just see. I have to talk to you. He sounds like that. He sounds like that. Well, the type of person that he's like, right. you know, like uh, 12 hours a day, yeah, yeah. and you're just like, you know, have a lot of Right. Um, and then it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a lot of people who are like, you know, it's a Yeah, I was going to say, okay, yeah, I started to figure it out. And then that afternoon, 
Furthermore, he had planned to start his last experiment, which he has been delaying already. The time demands of the experiment would not allow him to work both on the figures and the experiment at the same time. Is this realistic? Is this fair? Where's the mentor Ben? That he doesn't know? So how should Joe respond to the request to spend Saturday working on figures instead of his own experiment? Should he A, agree to work on the figures, B, point out that he had planned to start his final experiment already delayed, ask Dr. S Dr. Smith if anyone else might be able to complete the figures, or D, risk not doing a very good job by attempting to do both tasks on Saturday. So, who all said A, work, agree to work on the figures? Anybody? No? No teams picked A? Did you pick B, point out that he had planned to start his final experiment? Okay. So everybody picked B. We picked B and C. You picked B and C. We like a combination. <laughs> Ask the mentor if anyone else might, might be able to complete the figures. Okay, well, first of all, let's start with A. Why did no one choose? Uh, and that's an alpha. T type in your, your uh, choices as well. Ah, B and C. That seems to be a popular, thank you, a popular <laughs> choice. So why not A? Yeah. I would have just done them on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that from home, but that wasn't an option. So I, okay. <laughs> I felt like Joe should just reiterate to Dr. Smith that he does have an actual job, and that's to get a PhD. And so just kind of gently remind him that he's been, you know, working on his stuff all week, and he kind of needs to do my, his own experiment. So by agreeing to do that, it didn't really give Dr. Smith the full story. Okay. So, and you wanted to combine that as did Hudson Alpha with C. Yeah. Why? I felt that it was very important for Joe to communicate well with Dr. Smith mm -hmm. rather than being just told to do something and him being, you know, feeling taken advantage of. And it's very important mm -hmm. to like have a conversation sometimes. So it's maybe he could have said that. You know, I have been delaying this experiment for a week, but I want to do the figures, but could someone mm -hmm. else be around to help out while my experiment takes some of my time? So, so we don't know if there's anybody else. Yeah, yeah. so right. maybe ask Dr. Smith. So, 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 so who, who are the stakeholders in this story? Who has something at risk? Yeah, Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. Okay. Joe. Yeah. Who else? Brian. The people who left. Okay, but we don't know that yet. So let's stick with this this first section. In this first part of the story. Yeah, the conference. Yeah. The conference. Who else? The postdoc position. Right, the postdoc mentor. Right. Yeah. So we got a bunch of people really that that have something in this game. Okay. I think so I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think the postdoc mentor's um, stake in the situation is, is very is minimal. I know there's some because you know most postdocs can, mm -hmm. it takes another week um, because they don't make a break. Generally, um, generally add six months. Right. You know, yeah. Oh, you'll be here in June. Well, I'll look at for you in the summer. Because we know how things go, right? Yeah. yeah. Why not D? Why not do both at the same time? Because there's still Sunday. <laughs> but you don't want to screw up your final experiment to get out the door. Yeah. But you also don't want to have like really crappy figures that are going in conference sure. presentation that you know mm -hmm. is associated with your your work. Sure. So going on to number two, what approaches might Joe have followed to ensure that the mentor was more familiar with his work habits? A Call Dr. Smith at 3 a.m. to ask how to troubleshoot something. B. Casually mention something at their occasional meetings, occasional meetings, about experiments done over the weekends. C. Provide written summaries, summaries of the experiments, including dates and timelines. Or D. Acknowledge the mentor's very busy schedule and ask to meet sometimes on weekends to discuss the data. Okay, who said A? Call at 3 a.m. I kind of did. You kind, of, you kind of really want to, I was right? Like, I email my boss at 2 a.m. regularly. <laughs> he does not respond at 2 a.m., but he does not complain when I'm not there at 8 a.m. Oh, so. Casually mentioned B. 
So which teams picked B? Okay, why didn't you guys pick B? Well, we had B with a caveat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And not just, we just don't think casually is. I mean, I think we think it's okay to, to tell your mentor how hard you're working and when you work. And mm -hmm. we combine that with also C. And I think we overlooked the word occasional. That's, a, that's an implied, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What does that imply? And they aren't meeting regularly. Right. Mm -hmm. Oops. Right. So you guys also picked me. Uh-oh. Our PIs don't regularly monitor our time, and Joe may be oversensitive. Well, he's, he's trying to finish. He's trying to get out the door. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> oh, okay, so. Why not C? Why not provide? Or what did you all in the back pick? C. You pick C. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, I guess then um, you have evidence, and then maybe he's you can even though he's not available to talk to you, but you you can always send him reports um, mm -hmm. that may, he may be looking at it, and then at least he's aware that you're working on the weekends. Would he really look at the dates? He's going to be focused in on the data, right? He's going to zone in on that data. I don't think it'll make a difference. Just because Dr. Smith's not organized doesn't mean he doesn't have to be. True. What, what about D? Why not meet on the weekend? Do you really want to see him on Saturday night? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> maybe, maybe not. Okay, yeah. Before we proceed further, yes. what about the many, I'm sure, real life instances yeah. where somebody would have said to number one in real life, D, or would have said um, B to number one, and the mentor replies with, make enough time. Just do it. So what then? She's a bad fit. She's a shitty mentor. They're as a fifth year PhD student, like he's mm -hmm. already set a precedent. You know, he's already yeah. set a precedent that they he does not need to be met with regularly. I mean, on on both sides of this, the mentor and the mentee. Okay. They've already set the precedent that they don't need or want to meet regularly. They've already set the precedent that they aren't keeping each other very well apprised of what's actually, what actual work is being done. And it seems like it's, you know, like on the mentor side, the mentor is not always aware of things that are going on as as loud as it needs to be. And on the mm -hmm. mentee side, he's not communicating, asking for the things he needs or right. communicating. The Maybe he feels he can't. Yeah. Yeah. And yet he's taken back by decisions. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like True. Yeah. So, so to your point, I mean, I my graduate mentor told me, A, you have the freedom and flexibility to work as hard and as much as you possibly can, and B, sleep when you're dead. That was my mentor. <laughs> Thanks. So they're out there. They're out there. He's passionate. I get it. But yeah, you just you just do it, right? So I put my tail between my legs, went back to my head, and it. Yeah. Communication. Okay, the story continues. Joe replies, yes, I can come in and finish these up. Thanks, Joe, the mentor says. I really appreciate the fact that you've spent so much time compiling and analyzing the data collected by Dave and Frank, who left without finishing their degrees. Hmm, <laughs> makes you wonder. Without that information, the presentation would have been very thin. By the way, I have decided to list you as the fourth author. Yay, for the presentation. Because it was the other students who actually collected the data. Pretty crappy, I think. So, three. Although Joe feels disappointed, understandably so, he doesn't want to quibble whether doing the data compilation analysis was more significant in collecting the raw data. How could this authorship issue then avoided? A. Smith should have had an explicit policy about authorship, known by all lab members. B. Authorship of abstracts and papers related to this project should have been discussed when Dave and Frank left the lab. C, there is no issue, because it's solely the mentor's responsibility to assign the order of authorship. 
Or D, it was Joe's responsibility to ask questions about authorship. Hudson Alpha, let me hear from you. What do you think? A, B, C, or D? And while they're typing, what do you all think? A? You said A and B. A and B should be part of A. A and B? A and B. So this should have an explicit part. Do you A B D? A B D. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That works. Yeah. How many know UAB's policy? I have it in writing. <laughs> you have it in writing. Is it C? UAB finally did put together a policy for authorship. It had not, it had finally put one together about a year or so ago. It had not had one prior. Um, certainly many journals will ask for the roles of all of the authors, and that does help guide the order, if you will, but in large part it is up to the mentor to assign that. So A, B, and, and D. I, I want to explore a little bit more with Dave and Frank. What do you think happened there? But they're still getting to be higher in the authorship? They just left. I, I, I mean, I, I really feel like B should be part of A. Like, if you are leaving the lab, once you are gone, you are not entitled to anything, unless that is something you've negotiated before you left. And, and I think it goes to, you know, being able to communicate, mm -hmm. being able to act professionally, and have that kind of conversation before you leave. It goes to, you know, acknowledging that you're leaving, you know, like, they shouldn't have left the data unanalyzed. They shouldn't have left it out. Yeah. Like, they just shouldn't have done that. So where, where would you put them then? Would you include them as an author? Would you put them in acknowledgments? If they didn't analyze the data, they're obviously not the ones who are, like, when you go to write a publication, they're not the ones writing, not writing the paper. Script. Second and third, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whoever is analyzing and writing, or whoever's writing it up, maybe first, because that's the mm -hmm. consolidation of information and reporting, and then it, you know, probably that's going to be the same person that analyzed the data, or, you know, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. say not to include them at all, but maybe right. then they should be in the acknowledgments, maybe they don't. They don't deserve author credit. If they haven't read and edit and at least done one read-through of a yeah. draft of the manuscript. And they will need to sign. And most journals now, if not all, have, have you sign as, a, as an author mm -hmm. to verify that you have read the paper, that you agree with it, and that you agree to be an author on it. Okay. After discussing a few more details with Smith, Joe closes the conversation by saying, well, have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Smith stops as he's leaving the lab and replies with a surprise tone, I'm not working tomorrow. Dude, I'm so not working. <laughs> so, why do you think he's not working? Do we know? He's got to play golf. He's got, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to play golf. Okay. He has to pack for his conference. <laughs> Not until Wednesday, but okay. Why does he have to? He has to stay here, you know, going to work. So we don't, we don't know. We don't have all the information. Perhaps, you know, he has a sick kid or what have you. We don't know. So, how should Joe reply then that Dr. Smith will not be working on Saturday? A, you expect me to spend the weekend on your presentation, but you're not going to work? B, I'm sorry, I'm assuming that because you asked me to come in that you'd be here too. See, I might need some help because I also need to start my final experiment. Or D, say nothing. What's Joe going to do, knowing Joe as we do? D. D. <laughs> what, um, what should he do? C. C. I think it's more of a follow-up to the first question, B. His answer where he says that no, I have an experiment set up and I try to work on, on, on the figures. Right. But if you could come, you know, I may need some help, so if you could come, then I can do right. some experiments. 
So given that Smith isn't working on Saturday, should Joe still spend Saturday working on the figures instead of doing his own experiment? Should he A, work on the figures, B, start his experiment, C, ask Smith if someone else can complete the figures, or D, I think we did this one already. Chris not doing a very good job. It's a, it's a different question. It's a different question. Yeah, it's sort of a different question. He said he'd do it, so A. Yeah. Definitely. I, I, we also said E, work on Sunday too. <laughs> but that's the free so what will happen. Yeah. 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 How long can it take to make figures? Go to brunch, have <laughs> Bloody Mary, <laughs> home, make figures. Okay. Get creative. Okay. Excellent. Start his new post off early. I like that. Yes. That you should the word. But he still has to defend, right? He's got to defend. Or he'll end up caddying, maybe, in first month. <laughs> uh, okay, is it, or it is acceptable to expect students to carry out work at the direct request of a mentor, but there is a difference between working for versus working with a mentor. It appears that Joe has been taken advantage of. What could Smith have done differently? Be more aware of Joe's habits and schedule. B, reward Joe by offering him a better authorship position. C, explain briefly why he was unable to work on Saturday himself. Or D, nothing. He's the mentor. He's the boss. So what should the mentor have done differently? A, be more aware. Yeah. No. How could he be more aware? Regular meetings. Definitely. Checking the notebook. Right? Be engaged. Yeah, be present. <laughs> yes, very much. Uh, what about uh, rewarding Joe with a better authorship position? I did not like the word reward because mm -hmm. I don't Why? feel like I don't feel like that's a reward. That's something that Joe should have gotten mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Like properly give Joe the author of the <laughs> Which he deserves. He Absolutely. Should he explain why he's not working on Saturday? Does that matter? Do we care? No. Mm -hmm. Only if he felt bad about it. Yeah, and he probably doesn't. <laughs> what about Joe's committee members? Could Joe turn to them? No. Why? Maybe for future problems, but probably not on Friday afternoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not for this situation, but he probably should have turned to his committee members in year two when this became, mm -hmm. when the precedent was set. Yeah, you wonder if this is the first time this has happened? Maybe not. So, you know, given what we talked about earlier in terms of elements of good mentoring, what kind of, what does this, what does this raise centrally as to what's lacking in needed? Sorry? Uh, the importance of being assertive. Yes. Communication. Mm -hmm. Communication. Yep. Very much. It almost seems like this is only an issue now because Joe is on a deadline to get done. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know like that's just my interpretation of this a little mm -hmm. bit. Well, and that, those are all the facts that we have. But like yeah. my my visualization of the story is he's always just crapped on Joe like this. But now it's a real issue because he's got a deadline. You've mm -hmm. got to get your stuff done at a certain time to graduate. So do we think Joe's going to be a better mentor someday? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Oh, he's never learned how to be a good mentor because he hasn't had a great mentor. But he's learned what not to be a good mentor. Which is well, as he sees Smith and his response of, I hate to ask people to work on a weekend. Mm -hmm. Like, there's lots of, and this isn't just in the sciences, but like in yeah. business too, where people come in and they're sleeping you know, 12 hours a day expecting a pat on the back when mm -hmm. the manager doesn't necessarily see that. Right. So, Mm-hmm. Hopefully Joe learns some stuff during his post up because um, you know, he is also part of this relationship that he's in now and he hasn't been as communicated as he could have been. So um, it's, it's unknown whether he's gonna you know, develop that. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very passive aggressive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. Oh. How about from Hudson Alpha? Any other comments? 
Since we finish up, Dr. Smith is the worst. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's, um, that's uh, for today. So next week, we will, again, meld together collaborations, time management, and conflict resolution. And if you have any other questions about retailer lab management plans, let me know. Uh, it's not required, as I say. It would be great to, uh, to have a few of you present on that last Friday, which will be the 16th. So next week, it will be collaborations, time management, and conflict. And uh, hopefully we'll have that presidential election behind us. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, that's Malpa. See you next week. There we go. See you later. Bye. Bye.